There are two ways to run tests using WebDriver I.O. The first, which we'll look at in this video, is to write a simple Node.js script and run it from the command line. WebDriver I.O. also provides a test runner tool as a second option, but we're going to save that for the next module. We want to write a custom test for our site, but it would be helpful to look at the official example first. On the WebDriver I.O. site, they include a simple script which executes a test on the DuckDuckGo search engine. Let's try that script out and see how it works. The first thing we'll do is copy the entirety of their code example, then save that to a new JavaScript file in our local WebDriver I.O. folder. I'll save mine as example.js, but the file name doesn't really matter all that much. Let's take a line-by-line -line look at the tests they provide. The first thing they do is require the WebDriver I.O. object. This is one of the tools provided to us when we installed WebDriver I.O. via NPM. The next step of their test is to configure some options. In their example, they tell Selenium to use the Chrome browser. We can change that to any other browser we have configured, such as Firefox or Internet Explorer. We'll leave it at Chrome, though. With WebDriver I.O. and the options set up, it creates a new remote object. This object is what we'll use to run all of our test commands. You can see the options get passed into the instantiation of that object. For more details on configurations you can provide to this object, check out the configuration guide on the official site. It goes into good detail on everything you can do. With the newly minted object ready, it's time for the test steps. The first step when running WebDriver I.O. in standalone mode is to initialize the browser. That's done via the init function. Just so you know, all the commands we run are really just function calls. Again, this is just JavaScript we're executing, so we'll stick with its syntax. The next function called is URL, which loads the website of the URL passed in. While the page loads in the browser, WebDriver I.O. will automatically wait before executing the next action. After the search engine page has loaded, the script will set a value in the search box using the setValue command. The setValue command only works for keyboard interactable elements like form inputs, text areas, or the body of the page. You wouldn't be able to set the value of an H1. It would throw an error. There are a variety of ways we can tell WebDriver I.O. what element we want. These are called selectors. The official documents go through each type of selector we can use, so be sure to check it out for more details. In the example test script, it uses an ID-based CSS selector to find the input field we want. That's passed in as the first parameter of the setValue command. The second parameter of the command is the value we want to set, which will be WebDriver I.O. Set value will tell Selenium to send the keystrokes W, E, B, D, R, I, V, E, R, I, O to the element, just as if we had typed them in ourselves. With the value in the search field, what we want it at, it's time to run our search. To do this, we'll click the search button. To do that, the script uses the click command, again, using an ID-based CSS selector to specify which element we want to click. This performs a mouse click action on that element which in turn runs the search. This submission reloads the page, which WebDriver I.O. inherently waits for. Once the page is reloaded, the title of the page is retrieved using the getTitle command. If you're familiar with JavaScript promises, you may recognize the then function. For those of you unfamiliar with promises, here's a basic explanation. Then is a generic function which allows us to take an action after the previous action has completed running. It can also pass along data from that previous action if provided. In this case, it gets the title value, which was passed along from the getTitle command. It logs that value to our console, which we'll see in a moment. Using then ensures that the title isn't logged out before the getTitle command has finished running. We'll look at an alternative to this style of writing test in the WebDriver IO test runner module. The last step of our test is to run the end command, which closes the browser and ends the session. Let's run the test to see the actions execute. Make sure you still have your Selenium server up and running from the previous video, otherwise the test won't run. Remember to use the node module bin selenium standalone start command for this. Then open up a new command line window and run node example.js. Running the test, we see a browser window pop up, DuckDuckGo get loaded, the input field filled, and search results returned. When we go back to the command line, we see the page title has been logged. Our test ran successfully and is complete.
Now that we've covered the example WebDriver I.O. script, let's write our own. We'll jump into that in our next video.